If you're asking yourself if Panama City is worth visiting, I can give you a very short answer. Yes, absolutely. I was blown away by this city. Panama City is even better than I expected and my expectations were already pretty high. Because it really is the kind of place that offers something for everyone. I did have one concern though. about safety and this whole time I was there I couldn't really find an answer for it so I came to Panama yesterday and I already had a bit of a meltdown all by myself and I pretty much hated it but then I slept for 12 hours I drank all the coffee that I had in this room then I ran out and begged housekeeping to give me more coffee then I drank that as well and now I'm feeling great and as you can tell excitement is very very high I'm so freaking happy to be here the excitement is high and the expectations that I have for Panama are pretty high as well because I've been wanting to come to this country for almost a decade now and Panama has always been on the very top of my bucket list. Okay, let's let's go and explore Panama City. So I'm going to start the day with walking on the promenade all the way down to the old town Casa Vieja first impression of Panama City so green and so modern I mean look at these buildings Panama City is located right by the Pacific Ocean and it's the biggest city and the capital of Panama it's country's hub for anything from finance to commerce and culture it went through many changes over the last couple of decades and today it's definitely one of the most modern cities in all of Central America I'm not gonna lie I am a little nervous right now as you can see I'm here all by myself. I'm traveling Panama solo. And this is definitely quite far outside of my comfort zone. I have traveled solo before. I have traveled solo before, but only in Europe and in Asia. So I feel like I do have a right to be a little nervous, but it's really like hitting me right now. I am currently at this massive street, I guess. It, it, it is a street, but it looks like it's close to traffic. There's no cars, there are just people biking and running, and it looks really nice. I am so impressed. This seems to be such a sporty place. Like, literally everyone here is wearing their workout clothes. Oh my god, just look at this view. The skyline is absolutely insane. You know what? I think that Panama City is even better than I expected. As you can probably tell at this point, I already forgot that half an hour before I was a little nervous and I was having the time of my life. Panama City has basically everything that I love. Skyline, a palm trees, an ocean, I mean perfect combo. And the promenade at Cinta Costera is 7 kilometers long, so it's the perfect place to enjoy it all. And you know me, I love a good walk. Uh, I think I spent like half of my time in Panama City walking back and forth on Cinta Costera. So my last stop before the old town is Cinta Costera Free, which is this great spot where you can basically see the whole skyline. And then there is also this huge Panamanian flag right there. Even though it's hot, I'm really glad that it's not raining. So it's still the very end of the rainy season here in Panama. And the rainy season in Panama is actually very long. It lasts for nine months. So basically it kind of rains here most of the time. So if you're coming to Panama, make sure that you're not coming like in the middle of the rainy season. Look what we've got here in a Panama hat. Fun fact, the Panama hat is actually not from Panama. It's originally from Ecuador. So I made it to the old town, but before I go exploring, I'm gonna go to a cafe called Cafe Coca-Cola, and it is not the only, the oldest cafe in Panama City, but it's also the very first place where they start selling Coke, I mean Coca-Cola, outside of the US. <laughs> You know, it's absolutely fascinating to me how like only two weeks ago I read about this place and now I'm here like on the other side of the planet I'm just sitting here drinking my coke in cafe coca-cola obviously I had to order a coke I'm not an idiot 
imagine coming to Cafe Coca-Cola and not ordering a Coke. Can you even? So I ended up ordering some breakfast food since I didn't have any breakfast that day. And it was very nice and also very affordable. I paid only about $5. Uh, so that coke and that breakfast was exactly what I needed and now I feel so much stronger and ready to explore the old town Casa Vieja is probably the most popular tourist attraction in Panama for a good reason. Back in the days, it actually used to be considered a bit sketchy and unsafe, but in the 90s, it was added to UNESCO World Heritage Site. And ever since, this area went through a huge transformation. Nowadays, it's a mix of both old and new, and there are many tourist attractions here like museums, and it's actually known for a lot of good restaurants and hotels. Uh, but what I probably love about it the most is that you can still see some signs of local life. Um, I accidentally stumbled upon this baseball game at the beach. So I've noticed that a lot of people come here to do like photo shoots, like professional photo shoots with photographers. I think a lot of them are celebrating their birthdays because those um, number balloons seem to be a really big thing here. I found this really cool coffee shop. I think I'm gonna give it a try. Oh my god, that coffee was such a good decision. It was one of the best coffees I ever had in my life. Like literally, I'm not exaggerating. It was so good, which is of course not a surprise because Panama is also known for good coffee. I will go to an area where they have coffee plantations here up in the north. Nowadays, Casa Vieja is considered completely safe. I did see a lot of police here. And actually, since there are so many hotels and hostels in this area, a lot of people choose to stay here. I probably wouldn't because I was personally very happy about my accommodation choice um, in the new part of the city. But of course, this all depends on your preferences. And I will show you my hotel later in this video. Or you can follow me on Instagram or TikTok where I post hotel tours and I share how much I paid for it. So this guy is looking a little dangerous right now. I've got to head back anyways because there are a couple of things that I need to do today. I need to get myself a SIM card and I need to buy some water. I'm a busy lady as you can see. Good morning. It is the next day and right now I'm going to do something funny. I'm going to get a SIM card. That's not the funny part. Wait, let me explain to you what's, what's so funny about it. I really need a SIM card because number one, I'll be doing a couple of uh, Uber trips back and forth around Panama City today. And also I'll feel much more comfortable um, having access to internet on my journey to Santa Catalina tomorrow. So tomorrow I'm leaving Panama City and I'm going to Santa Catalina, which is a little beach surf town. And even though it's only 250 kilometers, it's gonna take me about eight hours if everything goes smooth. I'm actually a little bit nervous about this whole journey. Anyways, okay, more about that later. And the funny thing about today is the fact that I need to go to the bus station just to check the bus schedule for Santa Catalina and to get the bus ticket. Getting bus tickets at the bus station, not so weird, but the fact that you can't even check the schedule online, that's the funny part. Okay, let's let's get that SIM card. I was told that apparently this pharmacy has SIM cards. Hello, do you have SIM card? So far so good. I am a proud owner of a Panamanian SIM card. And the lady at the shop was so sweet. She helped me to do the whole thing. My Uber is here. Hola. Hola, buena. Yeah. Okay, I made it to the bus station. It's gigantic. If only I spoke Spanish. I have absolutely no idea where to go. Oh my god. <gasps> Found it. There is the bus for Santiago. Okay, apparently I don't need a bus for uh, Santiago. I need a bus for Sona. There we have Sona. 
¿A qué hora? ¿A qué hora se vuelvo? ¿Dónde va? Okay, so I did it. I managed to get a ticket for Santa Catalina for tomorrow for 10 a.m. It cost $10. It actually went pretty fast. Like, it literally took me five minutes. Honestly, I don't know why I'm so nervous. Like, why am I such a lamer? Why do I even go traveling if I keep being nervous? Those old school boxes are really cool. And right now, I'm gonna head over to this restaurant that apparently has really nice traditional Panamanian food. This building is the biggest mall, not only here in Panama, but also the biggest mall in Central America. And I think that's where the restaurant is. So I have absolutely no idea what I ordered, but it is something called Panamanian plate with all kinds of traditional dishes. So I figured this is a good thing to try. This looks like a fried banana. Or not banana, I know that they eat something here that is like a cousin of banana and they're not called bananas, but they look similar. It's not sweet, but it does taste a little similar to a banana. So that meal cost me $19 with a tip, so I wouldn't necessarily call Panama an affordable destination. Well, it depends for who, maybe for Americans, and actually they do use American dollars here in Panama. They have their own currency, but they use uh, American dollars as well. Why are you making so much noise? I'm back in a cup and I'm on my way to a place called Ancon Hill and it's basically the highest point in Panama City. Um, so I'm gonna do a little hike, or actually I don't know how little it is because some sources say one hour and it's not that little, but other sources say 20 minutes, then yeah, then it's a little hike. Anyways, what I do know is that it's a good viewpoint where you can see the whole city and maybe also a little bit of Panama Canal. So I was just dropped off here and I guess now I am supposed to hike up these stairs. The ride was only $2. Uh, it was quite close, so it took like 5 minutes. But still, I feel like with prices here in Panama, it's a big mix. Like some things are very affordable and then other things are not that affordable. Oh my god, just look at this view. Already worth it. So there is something making a lot of noise in the bushes and I'm really scared right now because, I mean, I don't know what I should be scared of, like animals, I guess, maybe. I don't know. I mean, we're still in the middle of the city, but I heard that there are uh, monkeys here and monkeys can be a little dangerous. made it to the top it did not take longer than 30 minutes maybe even less i also stopped on the way to take pictures so it definitely does, does not take one hour what you see behind me can you even see it it is the largest flag in panama okay i can barely talk i'm so tired I have not yet shown you around the place where I'm staying, so time for a quick room tour. This whole time I was here, I just kept asking myself this one question why i don't see more people traveling here i honestly like i i just don't get it i mean sure maybe it's just far away from europe where i'm from but i still think it might be just a matter of marketing um some places like for example panama's neighbor costa rica are just way more out there on social media and i think panama just doesn't get the same level of advertisement uh which i honestly think it's a shame because i would definitely recommend anyone to travel here 
I wanted to talk about safety, uh, whether I felt safe in Panama City so far. And the answer to that question is yes, I felt safe. I have not experienced anything that would make me feel unsafe or uncomfortable. And based on the research that I did before this trip, in general, Panama is definitely safer than some other countries in Central and in South America, which of course it doesn't mean that you should be an idiot and just walk around at night and not think about things. Even though Panama is relatively safe, what I wanted to say is that today when I took the taxi from the bus station, the mall area, to the hill, we were driving through neighborhoods that um, as soon as I saw them, I knew that if I would happen to walk there, it would definitely not be a good idea for me to walk through there by myself. Uh, to be honest, even if I would be with a friend in a group of foreigners, doesn't matter really. Um, Panama definitely, Panama City is a big city and it definitely has neighborhoods and areas that are not safe where you should not be walking by yourself and definitely not at night. Yes, yeah, so I think the case with Panama City is the same thing as with every large city. You really need to do your research and you really need to know where you are allowed to go. And the rule here is always, if you're not sure if you can go there or not, it's better not to. Um, and the reason I also wanted to talk about it is because the distance between the mall and the hill was not very large it was probably like a couple of kilometers so at first when i saw it i was like oh maybe i can walk but then i was like okay you know what i really don't know if it's okay for me to walk and just to you know obviously clarify i'm not saying that if i would walk there for sure something would happen to me no i mean but who knows right i knew that i knew that i knew that i knew that downtown area where i'm staying uh, by the ocean, the old town by day, because for from what I know by night, it can be a bit different as well. Those are areas where I am fine walking by myself, but I didn't have any information about the neighborhood in between this mall and the hill where I wanted to walk. So I decided that in this case, it's better to just take a taxi and you know I'm really glad that I did. After Santa Catalina I will be going to three more locations in Panama so hopefully you'll stick around. I'm very excited to share more of my adventures in Panama with you and yeah I hope you enjoyed my Panama City vlog. I definitely enjoyed hanging out around the city. Such a great place. I would definitely love to come back and yeah I hopefully see you soon.